Howdy YouTube! What you see before you is a mostly assembled T440P with a core boot payload with uh, ME Cleaner and uh, at the moment CBIOS. But we're not going to talk entirely about that in this video. We're mainly going to be talking about, well, how uh, I figured out Tiano Core, which uh, is a nice little uh, UEFI payload you can put on core boot. So I uh, wasn't really too familiar with UEFI, and if you want later, I'm going to make a full video on the T440P core boot disassembly and probably a few other mods. But this was the end result of the Tiano core flashing. But today, we're going to be focused on, well, how I went about testing out uh, Tiano core configurations and things like that which uh, I did with this X220 over here, which is uh, nice enough to seem like it has the OEM software at least, but uh, even though it has nice backgrounds, we're soon going to be putting Tiano Core and messing around about with it. Okay, so first things, uh, I mainly use the X220 as a testing platform because it's relatively easy to flash and I'm very familiar with it, and this isn't necessarily going to be a full tutorial, but it's just going to show the basics and my thought process for testing out Tiano Core and getting familiar with UEFI. So, let's uh, get into this. But one thing first, I guess, or another thing first. So, uh, for, well, People that saw my last video, I am still working on that Pentium 3. Uh, it's probably going to be delayed by a little bit, but I got my uh, powerful PCI card here off eBay. It took like a month or something to get here, but anyways, um, put the ATI Radeon 9250 back. So, let's uh, get started. The first thing to do when building a core boot system is to update to the latest OEM BIOS because you want the latest EC firmware. Uh, once core boot's installed, you can't really run this to update the EC firmware. And I found out the easiest way of doing this over the alternative of actually having a uh, version of Windows running to install the uh, BIOS update is well, to use a software known as uh, Get El Torito, I think I pronounced that correct, but I'm not entirely sure. So, essentially what that will do is uh, change a ISO file for a CD, which would probably work, but the X220 doesn't have a CD drive, and I don't have a USB CD drive either, so... Um, Run that software, and it'll give you a little image file, burn that to a thumb drive, and you will be ready to go. Uh, I've also done this on the X230 and the T440P. So overall, I can say it is a good way to go about it. And also make sure to double check at the end that it is actually updated to the latest EC firmware. So now to building core boot. So I'm skipping a few steps here. Uh, with the video, but you would have to run IFD tool to gather a few binary blobs, the Intel ME, and the descriptor file, and uh, the gigabit Ethernet firmware. So, um, also for Tiano Core, you have to set it to uh, linear frame buffer, I believe. This is also nice to do on Grub because it makes it look quite a bit nicer. So, Let's just uh, edit to the descriptor.bin file uh, directory back down. I have all my files in the core boot uh, root directory, so I just uh, change the, or well, shorten the names for the directory path. And when compiling core boot, it should find it pretty easily. Uh, for the Intel ME firmware, you I used ME Cleaner on it, but you can also and or actually uh, strip it down through core boot with the uh, strip the ME and validate or verify the integrity option. Uh, so 
after you do all that, you should have something that will at least give you a defaultly CBIOS payload, but we're going to end up changing that to Tiano Core. Also, don't forget to change the gigabit uh, Ethernet uh, blob directory. So let's go and generate some Tiano Core payloads. Um, I'm also probably going to add a little uh, boot splash image, but we'll get into that in a bit more later. So, Core Boots Tiano Core, just uh, run make afterwards, and you should have a nice little uh, Core Boot uh, blob created. So, after that, uh, I just go to the X220 and I'll flash a chip. Normally, I would do a complete disassembly on this to uh, redo the thermal paste on the heatsink, which will give it uh, slightly better temps. But in this case, since I'm just experimenting with the Tiano Core ROM, I decided to skip that step for now. So afterwards, uh, I'm just using my Raspberry Pi. It's a uh, a little bit better than the CH341A in terms of speed control, although uh, I found out it's the easiest to set up when using something like uh, SSH and another system besides it, which is the other X220 you see. So let's boot it up and uh, we'll have a nice little uh, picture of Lane, but I thought I could do a little bit better. And here we go, we have our, well, second lane photo for our boot splash, which uh, I think looks quite well. Nice thing about Tiano Core is you can actually edit some of the uh, settings, such as um, the actual path to the EFI files and things like boot order directly through the BIOS without having to recompile a ROM like you would on something like a grub payload. But overall, um, I found it relatively nice. Uh, for the boot splash, let me do this really quick or else I'm gonna have to extend the photo length in the video editor. Or just uh, say it really quick afterwards. General rule is two thirds for the uh, maximum height and width of your screen resolution. BMP file, and it has to be 8-bit color. So, yeah. So after you generate a photo and uh, make something that looks kind of nice, you can go and flash your ROM with a nice boot splash image to bat with. Okay, so I've avoided using EFI systems, or UEFI, for quite a while. Like, a very long time. So, and, unfortunately, I uh, have all my installs working off a script, which, uh, when using the bootstrap, did not uh, take care of uh, Grub EFI. So, since the majority of my systems either use a Grub payload, as long as there's a boot.cfg file it can find, it will actually boot up on it. Uh, you don't have to use... Uh, let me get my notes here. Well, essentially I use master boot record, which uh, is supported by Tiano Core, but I uh, probably should have read a little bit more of the documentation because I converted it to, oh God, GPT. So, uh, yeah, sorry about the jump cut that probably happened there. Um, but uh, there isn't really that, like, many benefits to doing it. Uh, it's slightly better with, uh, I guess, well, it can support bigger than two terabyte partitions, but uh, rather than that, that step was really unnecessary. You just need a 512 megabyte FAT partition to, uh, or FAT32, to actually get this to start up. So... When using a conventional installer, or like if you use the Debian net install thing, it would uh, 
already have it set up for UEFI and things like that on your system. But uh, in order to get that, I um, first had to deal with a few issues. Okay, so part of the reason I'm doing all this to uh, get my install to actually boot up on a EFI system is, well, I made a little mistake. So when I was doing the core boot config, I forgot to select the option to enable CMOS. So I'm not exactly sure how Tiano Core stores everything, but without the CMOS, uh, well, the ability to write or save via CMOS, you won't be able to save your boot order, which can get really annoying if you have an MSATA and a hard drive plugged in at the same time. So I decided to recompile the ROM. But there's also something I wanted to test, which was internal flashing. So to verify that internal flashing works and I didn't have to reassemble the T440P, I, um, well, decided to get my installation running on EFI for my normal install. And part of that uh, was using another computer and in this case, I chose, well, my desktop. And, well, at least kind of my desktop. And once I put it, both things into UEFI only, since this thing was kind of buggy to begin with, it ended up with some rather uh, concerning beeping noises and eventually a flashing uh, red ring. Uh, later on, though, I was able to correct this with just by unplugging the CMOS battery and plugging it back in. That machine's kind of off though. Okay, so now to plan two, MSATA. Essentially, put an MSATA drive in there, uh, use Wi-Fi from a phone, and use the typical well, thumb drive installation. In retrospect, I probably could have just used an Ethernet bridge from the other X220, but this was probably the quickest way to get a new installation on there so I could go, well, get the internal flash to work. So, this is a quick look at the EFI shell, and if you type in exit, you can go in here. To get it to boot, I had to uh, select boot from file. Uh, these are also saveable, and you can make little entries in this, but uh, right now I'm just getting it to uh, boot uh, from grub64.efi and get into the installer. And from there, with my uh, other uh, hard drive for my main installation, I was able to set up Grub EFI on that and make a similar entry. So, I did a few other things, but the main thing you need to do is create a 512 megabyte FAT32 partition. So, after that was done and my uh, waste of time on GDisk to convert it to GPT. Okay, so now for the moment of anticipation. After spending all this time messing around with uh, the X220, verifying that internal flash will work and things like that, and then booting up my converted installation to run off EFI, I uh, was met with, well, a hanging screen, and my hopes began to drop. And then I realized something. Something uh, quite horrible. So I accidentally used the squiggly mark instead of a dot when writing out that little script. I would have typed it in manually, but uh, after noticing that, I think I actually uh, was swearing. So this is the look of uh, disappointment and slight exhaustion, but I am hardware flashing it again. I figured I'd keep the reaction at least. Uh, in its uh, purest form instead of like in an hour when I fix all this. It's probably going to be two videos. Okay, so yeah, that might have been a little bit uh, over dramatic because I did eventually, uh, well, 
it was a lot quicker the second time to take off the uh, back plastic. And this is the part specifically I'm talking about, not the uh, little uh, back plastic uh, side piece that lets you access everything. But after taking it off, I uh, did the hardware flashing thing again. I'm trying to save some of the footage. And by then, uh, I was actually quite tired, so I wasn't filming that portion. Uh, I did one more internal flash, though, because this is what it looked like originally. Only two-thirds of the image was showing, so I did uh, fix that. It was actually an issue with image conversion, not the uh, Tiano core build or anything like that. So this is the final result. And, well, uh, I'm glad uh, if you enjoyed the video, uh, please post comments in the description. I generally answer comments for about a day or two after I upload, and I'll probably catch up on some of the older ones since it's been a while since I uploaded. And I will soon have a T440P core boot uh, tutorial video out there. So... Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. This was kind of a mid-progress point on that. The X220 is, well, right here. This is a different one. Uh, if it has any battery in it, I can show you. It is uh, well and reassembled, although uh, I still need to get around to the thermal paste. But uh, essentially, that was my experience doing uh, Tiano Core on the X220 and learning a little bit about that and UEFI. Um, I guess this video format differs a little bit. Um, I could, uh, well, yeah, just post how you feel about it if you made it to the end of the video, and, uh, I hope everyone is staying safe and having a, uh, good, uh, well, I guess, uh, week. Peace. And have a good one.